let's say that you're interested in creating printable wall art or even art to sell via a print-on-demand partner like Printify, but you think it is too saturated to start. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to find and create wall art that is currently selling that still has low competition. So the first step is to head over to a keyword research tool and there are many out there in this example for this video. I'm just going to be using E-Rank and I actually typed in the type of product that I am wanting to sell. So in the search bar up here I typed in wall art. And as you can see there are a lot of different examples. And if you've watched my other videos, you know that I usually recommend going out after green if you are a new shop or if you are just starting out. Later on, once you're more established, you can definitely go after those higher search volume keywords with higher competition. So what I'm looking for is a green amount of searches, green amount of clicks, green amount of click through rate, and a green competition score. So high searches and uh, low competition. So green across the board. The one that I thought was the most interesting that we're going to go ahead and use as an example is the one called Sage Green Wall Art. So let me go ahead and pull that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and go after the keyword called Sage Green Wall Art. And I chose this one um, because it had a high amount of search and clicks, and it was still on um, the green scale for competition. So the next step that I'll do is go over to Etsy and see what the current results are for the most popular and what is actually being sold right now and take a look at the current design so that I know what is selling so I know what to create. So I've typed in sage green wall art printable and right away I can tell that it is a lot of boho, some vintage, minimalist um, and abstract type styles are the ones that are selling obviously all in sage green and the other thing to note is that most of these are all being sold as a set or a collage type wall set with them all being um, a little bit different but all definitely themed toward the same type of style whether that is like an abstract print or a minimal floral design um, or some type of vintage or um, looks like these are actually painters on this one. So keeping that in mind, um, I'm going to want to create a set of designs that are all matching um, with whatever type of style I decide to go with and um, create from there. So the other thing to note with, and this is why I chose this for this specific example, when I checked the revenue, well, let me back up a step here. First of all, I went ahead and clicked on all filters and clicked this little digital downloads box so that it would only show me the digital uh, items being sold for this particular keyword. And then I sorted by top customer reviews, which will bring me up the items that have been reviewed the most. And then using my Everbee uh, extension, I clicked on product analytics so that I could get a estimated amount of revenue for the um, designs being sold on the first page. So then I'm gonna go ahead and filter by monthly revenue. And um, this first one here, I'm not gonna count because it is an ad and it um, is not really related to the particular keyword that we had put in. So um, I actually found several stores that were only one month old, two months old, and three months old, eight months old. So very brand new stores that all had over 100 sales a month. And so for anyone to say that the printable wall art category is particularly saturated, um, I would argue using this as proof that it's not. These shops have been open 
literally a month or a few months more and they've already made over 100 sales all that they did was find a very low competition keyword and they went after that they also one shop only had 11 listings in their store so they're not even putting out the quantity that I would normally recommend as a new shop and they still saw success. So hopefully that inspires some of you if you are interested in creating printable wall art or any other type of digital product. You just have to niche down to find a particular style within the product category that you're selling in in order to see results quicker. So the next step is actually to go over and create the artwork. So as many of you um, know, I use Midjourney to create pretty much all of my designs. So for this example, I entered in um, this prompt here, which is a lithographic print, boho rainbow print, minimalist, curved shapes, olive green, and terracotta palette with pale muted colors by Henry Matisse, which I saw a lot of Matisse style paintings on that first page. So that is why I went after this particular style. I created several different versions in different sizes as well because they are all off being offered as collage styles in different sizes. So I just changed the aspect ratio, which is the dash dash AR, um, two to three to just either be three to two or um, left it as a square one to one ratio as well. As far as sizing, what I would re recommend is to look at all of the competitors in the niche that you are or category that you are selling in and look and see what type of sizes that they are offering and either do the same or do a combination of what the best sellers are um, just because if they're currently selling that way you'll want to create your wall art uh, prints in the same size and offer them that way the next step is just to download all of your images from whichever AI tool that you are using, regardless of which one, and upscale them in your AI upscaler of choice. There are plenty of free ones out there. I do use the Gigapixel um, AI upscaler by Topaz and um, I have already upscaled them for the purposes to keep this video as short as possible. So. I will move on to the next step, which is to size them in Kittle. So I have changed my settings or my size of my canvas to 16 by 20, 300 DPI, optimized quality, and I have added in all of the designs that I downloaded from Mid Journey. And then I have saved them all as 16 by 20s, just because for the example, of this video, I'm going to go ahead and mock them up on a set of three and I have basically just put the images in here and drug this to make sure it fits the entire canvas and resized it or repositioned it to how I wanted it to look. And once I'm finished with that, I will go ahead and hit download and then I will do the, the same for the next three. So I found the mock-up that I wanted to use just because I thought it really complemented the colors of the design in Creative Fabrica. And if you don't um, have Creative Fabrica, I would highly recommend that you do. Um, if you're doing anything with digital design or print on demand, um, they are pretty much the most cost-effective type of program that you can get for your fonts, for images, for elements, for mock-ups. So I will have a link for that in the description below, but this is the one that I found. I just typed in a um, 16 by 20 frame mock-up and I chose this one and downloaded it. And then I added it in Kittle over here. And as you can see, it does have a um, transparent back or it's transparent where the frame is. So I'm gonna go ahead and position this to where it fits correctly and I did make this canvas be 3000 by 3000 just because Etsy now is having the product listing photos be a square image uh, which does mess things a lot up for 
a long time seller. So since this mock-up was a rectangular one, what I'm gonna do is on the back, and I saw someone make a video about this just to make all of your images square, an easy way to fix this is to um, add a background color and they recommended doing whatever your brand colors are. So mine's like a light mauve. And then go ahead and add in any branding or logo or any other type of information that you would want seen on your mock-up. So I'm just gonna add in And obviously I would normally add in my actual logo, but just for demonstration purposes, you could totally just type it out or any other type of information that you wanted to. And then I will go ahead and click download. So due to the amount of files that you most likely will be selling to your customers, you'll need to add the files to a either Google Drive link or a Dropbox folder. Um, you can do whatever your preference is and then you'll grab the link for that and create a PDF in something like Canva and then download that PDF and add that to your Etsy listing. I do have a video on how to create PDFs in Canva to link to your products. So if you have not watched that, just go ahead and check that out here. And once you have that PDF downloaded, then you will be ready to add that to your listing in Etsy. I hope this video was helpful. And if you'd like to see more low competition type product videos, then definitely let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.